What's up guys, Chris here from Vogus Prospecting and if you're new to the channel, welcome, almost fell over, and if you're an old hat, there you are. Welcome back. So what are we doing today? Well, I want to get you out of that bush and very excited about what we're doing today. We're going to be working a spot that I worked just a few days ago when it was sunny and shiny and it was the last few days of winter and it looked like spring and now it's the first day of spring and it looks like winter because just what happens to me when I come out and try and film a video. I didn't bring my camera that day and I pulled out 1.48 grams of gold in just 12 pans. That is a stonking amount of gold. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, check it out. It's some of the most nice looking gold I found. I found two quartz specimens with gold on them. I had an absolutely great day. And we're back with the sluice to try and get more of that gold. Now, there is a chance that there won't be very much left because it was basically in a pocket, a very large crevice. I will show you that so you get a better understanding of it but there's an awesome low pressure system in and around that area and that's what we want to work here is that low pressure system check out how the main flow of the creek roars past this bedrock and you can see some nice calm water and what's happening here is the water as it, as it travels downstream especially in flood it actually creates a low pressure system just here where you can see some bubbles and those bubbles are swirling around so if any gold or anything that that's heavy that would likely drop out in a low pressure system was going to hit that edge and then it's slowly going to get sucked in this way when i came over here there's a little crevice here i worked that out i probably only got about 10 bits of gold from it it wasn't overly good and there's not very much gravel sitting on top of this bedrock but as we look downstream it continues to an even bigger one just here and again you can see the same principles happening where the water's coming downstream and just here we've got a nice circular current you can see these bubbles wanting to do circles however there is one problem and that is that the bedrock from about this point here slopes back into that main shelf of rock there and that's created a nice bowl that's caught all my gold so i don't know how much more gold there is going to be over here when i tested with my shovel a lot of this dirt that is over here is sitting just on top of the bedrock with maybe only a couple of inches of coverage let's get the waders on and get cracking <laughs> i wish i could say that that was quick My plan is simple, I'm going to start at the bedrock and I'm going to work towards my dam and I'm going to come back hopefully as far as this but we'll just see how we go, see how my energy holds out, see how my back holds out and see if my shovel holds out because it's got some cracks in it because I abuse the hell out of this shovel. bit of ceramic and also a bit of old old glass now these are really good indicators that there's a low pressure system there and potentially gold because those things weigh slightly more than the average rock they sort of weigh around the same amount as quartz and that just means that if you're finding that sort of stuff you're in the right area for gems and you're potentially in the right area for gold got a couple of things going on that you should be aware of and i'll explain them now because this dam hasn't created a huge difference in water level from this side to this side it means that the sluice is running relatively flat and i am in fact scraping rocks down the actual sluice run and this is fine it actually means that i'm more guaranteed to keep hold of the ultra fine sub 100 mesh kind of gold uh, that we do get on this creek there's actually quite a bit of gold just running down there right now um, and 
that's absolutely fine. So that's why I'm scraping rocks off. And the second thing is the bedrock. The bedrock here is awesome. Just where my hand is running across here, there is a mound of bedrock. On this side is where I pulled out 1.5 grams worth of gold just panning, just in that little section. And I thought that this bedrock was gonna go flat all the way across, as you can see, up until about that boulder. But it's in fact sloping back down, and I'm finding some really nice clay. And that clay has a lot of gold in it by the looks of it. So we're on the money, we just gotta keep digging. So, I thought I'd better do a test pan because even though I worked a spot that got me really good gold, we don't know how far that pace streak continues and I don't know if I'm following it. I have been seeing gold go down the sluice run between two and five specks per shovel and that is exactly what I've got in here. I've got about five or six really nice bits of gold and then the rest of them are ultra small, ultra fine stuff that you're not going to be able to see on the GoPro. So we know we're definitely on it and the bedrock is still sloping down so hopefully there's a very nice deposit at the bottom. Got the sluice absolutely cracking along and we've probably run about half a meter of dirt from this section and that undercut goes so far in i can't get my shovel in there anymore what i'm going to do is yabby pump off that edge off the bedrock and just see what i've left behind that the shovel couldn't pick up not overly much which is good um, we've picked up probably about 10 or 15 little nano dots let's find out what's in the sluice what we really want to see when we start getting down to the bottom of the pan is a lot of ironstone and some black sand and if we've got that we'll probably be on a winner So, we have got what I wanted. We got a dense amount of black sand and ironstone. Let's get this clean so we can find out if we've got any gold. And there you have it. We have got some gold. We've even got one little specimen on quartz. Not nearly as much as I pulled out the first time I was here, but that is exactly what I expected. This is the ultimate low pressure zone. The water comes past here and it has to slow down here. It has absolutely no choice. Even if it's in flood and it's up over the top of this rock, that's a beautiful drop off. And that's where I pulled out most of the gold. As I came back over here, there's still some very nice dirt uh, and I am pulling out gold, but it's not nearly as rich. And it's because it's the tail end of the teardrop now most low pressure systems work in the teardrop they taper off at one end as the current comes back into play and that's just what we picked up there it would be worth probably continuing this little spot but i've got another spot i want to try so we're going to go over there and sluice that goodbye delicious gold hole hello potential new gold hole Welcome 
to spot number two. I like spot number two. Unless you're friends with the gods of rock like Lemmy and David Bowie and Michael Hutchins, then there's no guarantee that you're going to get good gold. But I've got a hunch that there could be something good here. Just here is the first hole I ever dug on this creek right there. And I pulled about three grams out of it over a couple of days. It was hard work. But at the time of digging, I didn't know what I was doing. Now I do. Check this out. It's on an inside bend. So we've got a nice big straight that comes down here. You can see the erosion that's been blasted out of that bank, and then it continues on its merry way. Uh, where I dug was just at the very start of that inside bend. So what we're going to do now is come back further, actually around to where all the boulders are distributed, and dig a hole. I took a test pan out of here not too long ago, uh, and I pulled about five or six nice little bits of gold just off the top. So we're going to clear some rocks, feed the sluice, get some gold. It doesn't always happen. It doesn't always happen. But when you throw a shovel in and you watch the dirt go down, you turn around to get another shovel of dirt and you see a picker just sitting in the mat, I always pick them up because I don't want to lose it. You know, you never know. I've had my sluice float away on me. I need my pan. I'm going to look at this picker. I haven't even looked at it yet. Okay, I haven't looked at it. We're both going to see it for the first time together. And oh, look at it. Yeah. Oh, this inside bend delivered. That is a nice, nice bit of river worn gold. Oh, that's made my whole day worth it. Pick our corner. Ladies and gentlemen, Darcy shall attempt to cross the creek. <laughs> Here we go. Cue good music. <laughs> Winner! <laughs> I haven't really dug too much of a hole to be honest. It's not that big. There was a lot of big rocks in there. And but I'm going to clean it out because I want to see what kind of gold I got so I can decide whether I stop or not because my back's starting to hurt. Oh, okay. Moment of truth time. If we get this and we just do one of these. So much easier than panning it off doing that. There we go. We have gold, including the picker that I got out. It's safely in my snuffer bowl. Yeah, that's not too bad. That is flood gold, exactly what I expected. The more dirt that I work from here, the more gold I'm going to end up with. So it's just a quantity thing at this stage. But I am going to call it a day. I don't think I've got any more digging left in me. Well, there you have it, guys. That was a cracking little day. We hit that spot that everyone told me to go back on sluice. We did that. We found all right gold but pretty much what i expected just flood gold accumulating we already pulled out the best parts of it panning a few days earlier and again we still pulled a gram and a half out of that hole with just a pan so what we added on top of that has probably pushed it closer towards two grams from one spot we moved up further found a nice little inside bend and hit some flood gold we hit several different layers with varying types of gold in it including finding one little nugget which was awesome i'm about to show you all that gold i wanted to say thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video remember to hit that like share and subscribe button that helps me grow the channel bigger and better for you peace and i'm out
I've got Rex with me. <laughs> okay, it's announcement time. I want to talk to you guys about the direction of Vogus Prospecting. Now, to start off with, I think this is important to talk to you guys about where I'm going with Vogus Prospecting because I've created a very large community around this channel. I've met hundreds of people out on the creek and I've gained some very, very good friends from this channel, as well as people that I have never met. I get thousands of emails and messages and all sorts of stuff that just you, I wouldn't have got without this channel. So for me to stay true to myself and true to the channel, I must tell you about why I want to do some things with Vogus Prospecting. Up until very recently, I had wondered about the purpose of this channel. What was the end result? What was the end goal? And it wasn't until I watched one of Casey Neistat's videos that it all came into very sharp focus for me. And that is, th there really isn't a purpose for this channel. The whole concept of what I like to do is to create. I wake up every morning with a million ideas running through my head from the second my eyes open and I can't shut it off until I go to sleep eventually after I fight down all the ideas I've had all that day. Creating is something that's inbuilt to me. It's something that I love to do, and that's what I'm sharing with you guys. But I want to funnel that creative energy into a different finished product. See, for me, I'm not satisfied unless I'm creating, which is a constant role. There is no end game to that. Uh, and in that constant role, I've created 223 episodes of Vogus Prospecting where I sort of meander around and no idea what I'm doing. So we're going to change that a little bit. What I want to do is take this channel to more of a uh, TV sort of style uh, episode base. Now, I'm not changing what I do. I'm still going to film the same. I'm still going to talk to you guys the same. Nothing's going to change except for probably the upload schedule and you'll probably see a little bit of difference in the length of the videos and the consistency in which they're delivered. And what I mean by the consistency is the overall theme, what the episodes are about. I've got a rough idea of what it's going to look like in my head, but but until I start really getting my teeth into it and give it a go for a little while, I'm not going to fully understand. So for the near future of Vogus Prospecting, it's going to look something like this. I want to do one episode a week, which means I'm going to upload on a regular basis each Friday. On Friday, Australian time, so Thursday for the US, Canada, places like that, I will upload an episode. I'm hoping that each episode will be between 15 minutes and 25 minutes long, somewhere around that. And with the extra time I have during the week where I'm not creating so many videos, I should be able to put a lot more effort into the actual quality and final production, of them, which I am very excited about. The episode will be part of a season. These seasons will be basically hovering around a loose theme. So it might be anything from trying new products to going to new locations, to showing you how to work specific things. I've got some general ideas there. Again, we'll get to that. But the idea will be that we have eight episodes per season, so one episode a week. It basically means that it's going to take eight weeks or roughly two months to get through one season of Vogus Prospecting before the theme will change. And I may upload videos in between these episodes, just depending on what's going on and what I want to explain. So I hope you'll join with me in this new venture, this new idea of Vogus Prospecting. I want to take it to the next level. 223 episodes up to and including this one was the pilot of Vogus Prospecting. Welcome to Season 1, Episode 1, starting this Friday.